Hello and welcome to Sam's Kitchen Chronicles. Here in Korea, lots and lots of fast food and foreign foods are showing up everywhere you go. And more and more, you can get pretty much anything you want. And of course that includes things like McDonald's and all sorts of fast food restaurants. These days you even have Shake Shack. Now when we're dealing with McDonald's, a lot of people will talk about how much they miss filet fish sandwiches, McGriddles, and lots of other things. Because you know, everywhere you go, they'll have different menu items. For me, the thing that I really miss about McDonald's is the bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit. I've always wondered why the biscuit was not a regular breakfast item at McDonald's. If you're missing the bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit as much as I am, then keep watching because I'm going to show you how you can recreate it in your own kitchen. There are four components to the bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit. As the name suggests, there's bacon, egg, cheese, and biscuit. The cheese and bacon can be store-bought, though if you can smoke bacon and make your own cheese, more power to you. In this video, I'm going to focus on demonstrating how to make the biscuit and egg. Now let's start with the biscuit. For the biscuit, you only need five ingredients. Two cups of all-purpose flour, one tablespoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of salt, about a half cup of butter, three quarters of a cup of milk. This recipe will yield about six to eight biscuits, and it all depends on how you cut them. I'm going to be making sandwich size biscuits, so this batch will be cut into six squares. First, preheat the oven to 230 Celsius or 450 Fahrenheit. It's important to have the oven ready because once the biscuits are ready to go, you're not going to want to waste any time. You want to pop them in immediately. Cut out about a half cup of butter. You're going to cut it into smaller pieces. Next, you're going to combine all the dry ingredients. That's two cups of all-purpose flour, one tablespoon of baking powder, and a teaspoon of salt. Then you're going to take the butter and you're going to cut it into the flour mixture. A key to making biscuits is to keep the butter cold. Some people like to freeze the butter ahead of time and use a grater to grate the butter into the flour. I'm just going to use a fork to cut the butter into smaller pieces. Don't do this for too long or you'll bring the butter to room temperature. Or even worse, body temperature. Whatever you do, work quickly and mind the butter temperature. You can use your finger to break down any really big pieces if you need to, but keep in mind, don't spend too long doing this. If you wait long enough, the butter will rise to room temperature. Cut the butter into the flour until you get a coarse, crumb-like texture. Now add the milk and mix until you get a sort of shaggy mass. You do not want to knead the mixture or mix it too well. Keep it as shaggy as possible while bringing it together. This will give you a crumb-like texture that is characteristic of biscuits. Just when it comes together, dump it onto your work surface. Now bring the dough together into one mass. Now fold it into itself about seven times. Again, you want to keep this dough as cold as possible, so don't use your hands if you can. Use a rolling pin. And don't work the dough. You want to keep it from getting warm. You can dust flour in between to keep it from sticking to the rolling pin. This will also help give your biscuits those flaky layers.
give it a quick shape so that it's more or less rectangular. You want it to be about half an inch to three quarters of an inch thick. Now you're just going to cut it into biscuits. You can use a cookie cutter if you like. I just cut them into squares. And remember, these are going to be made into sandwiches. So I'm going to make sure that they're just the right size. I think six is perfect. Now arrange the biscuits on your baking tray so there's a little bit of space in between them. Not too far, not too close. Now if you look at the cross section, you can kind of see the layering as a result of the folds. This is what we want. As the baking powder and the flour are kind of layered in between those folds, you're going to get that sort of rise as the biscuits bake in the oven. Now pop it in the oven for 10 minutes. Here we go, you can see the layers. And look at that steamy, flaky goodness. See those layers? That's the result of the folding, the baking powder, and the cold butter. Now turn up that music and show me that close up. Next, we're gonna fry our bacon. Just a couple minutes on each side is good. I like to make my bacon a little bit more on the crispy side. If the bacon is too soft and rubbery, it might slide out of the sandwich when you bite it. And if you know me, one of my pet peeves is a messy sandwich. You don't quite want the bacon to crunch, but you do want it to break cleanly when you bite it. But if you like a crunchy bacon, go for it. Heck, if you like a rubbery bacon, go for that. I'm just trying to save you the inconvenience of a bacon slap to the chin. And it should look something like this. Yojongdo crispy. Now when it comes to eggs, you may be wondering why I'm showing this to you. But you'd be surprised how many people do not make scrambled eggs correctly. I know you're thinking, how hard can it be? You just crack some eggs into a pan and scramble, right? Well not exactly. Not for these sandwiches. First, crack the egg into a bowl and whisk it. If you want to make it super fluffy, add a fat, like milk or butter. Whisking will give it the nice fluffy texture and a uniform yellow color. Next, on a nonstick pan, and it's important to use a nonstick pan if you can, add your oil or butter and put it on low heat. Then add your eggs and stir slowly. As you can see, I like to use chopsticks when I cook. I guess that's just the Korean in me. Now as I stir these eggs, you'll see that I'm not really stirring them as much as just breaking it into chunks and then letting it come together again. You can tilt the pan to let the liquid eggs fill those gaps. Notice how I take it off the heat occasionally. You don't want to overcook these eggs. This method will give you a nice fluffy texture while allowing you to shape the eggs to fit your sandwich. I'm going to shape mine to fit my biscuit. When it solidifies again and you can move it in your pan as one piece, you can just flip it over. You don't have to cook it so long as you did the first side. Just leave it on until it comes together. I like to place my cheese on the egg immediately so that it starts to melt. Now for the sake of thoroughness, here's what not to do. Not whisking it beforehand will give you different chunks of white and yellow. Which isn't such a bad thing, but it does take away from the aesthetic. Stirring the whole time will break the eggs into pieces that aren't good for sandwiches. See the difference? It's all about the little things, guys. And finally, we assemble the sandwich. Egg and cheese on first. I like to use the melty cheese to my advantage and place the bacon right on top of it. It'll hold the bacon even more in place as it melds together. Then just top the sandwich with the other side of the biscuit and you're set. And that's how you do it. Enjoy with the coffee or orange juice. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it. 
Try making it yourself and let me know how it goes for you. Let me know if you have any suggestions for future videos, and if you enjoyed watching this, make sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share. Now click on this link if you want to see me eat this sandwich. And remember my sampungis, where there's a will, there's a way. <laughs>